Okay, I bought this earth rod this morning. Gonna be installing that on the outside. Then connect a proper earth up to the solar system. So there's an earth for the charge controller and an earth for the inverter. And then I'll need an earth for the fuse box. Okay, I've got the, the earth wire connected into the ground, which is sitting sitting about that out there on the outside. I want it to come in about there somewhere so I can put some put some conduit coming out and have it come along there onto an earth bus bar somewhere and then also connect up to here in that fuse box there. So I ran the earth wire through the conduit on the outside and poked it in here. So that's it coming out. While I drilled the hole for the outside wall, I also drilled the hole for the, the wastewater to poke out. So I've got it going out there. I haven't glued it yet, but that'll come, come soon. In the shed here, it's currently 38 degrees. Um, pretty hot. The solar is bringing in 6.7 amps just to put a bit more charge in these batteries. I've got this little fan running uh, just to keep it sort of cool in here. But I think I'm going to get some computer, computer fans and see if I can wire them straight up to a solar panel or onto these negative and positive buses and have a fan coming down here pushing the air in between these two systems just to cool the cool the air that gets sucked in by the inverter so that might help with the um, the performance of the inverter as well so this is the T joiner that I'm going to be putting on so that's going to sit there one wire goes left one goes right um, so I'm going to mark where I'm going to put it cut that off and stick these in and then feed one one wire to the left one to the right So the T conduit has this inspection plate, so I can use that to divert the wires when I push it on. Okay, so I've got the T all done, installed the bus bar. Um, I'm gonna get some tape which is the, the earth colored tape, the green tape. So this, this big loop here, that's the ghost of the earth ground snake stake. Um, goes through the T and then out the wall. This other one connects from the bus bar through the T into this fuse box and then attaches to the earth there. Um, so I actually installed a thicker gauge wire. So this is eight AWG down to the um, earth stake just because the connection points in the charge controller and inverter actually require this this gauge wire so that's what I've done so now I've got to just connect from the bus bar to the inverter to the charge controller but I think I'll do that later because it's getting late I want to go down to the plumbing shop and get get some extra adapters um, to start installing the water supply. So this is that shark bite connector. Um, double adapter for a poly pipe. So yeah, I'll go down there and get that before it shuts. Okay, so I'm ready to install this pipe that goes from the waste here out the door. Um, just glue it up, poke it out, and then there'll be some overhang on the outside, which I can play with later. Cut it off shorter if I want to. But for now, this way at least it's going out the wall. And then I can test it out. So 
so there's that waste all glued in nicely. I actually tested the water, flushed it down, put, poured some water down the shower, made sure there's no leaks coming out down here and make sure it exited out the wall, which it did. So now I'm going to be connecting this, this shark bite water. This is going to be the cold water. It's going to go here, there's going to be a T, similar to this setup, and then it's got a branch off here, and that goes to the shower, shower cold water, and then through there it goes to the basin and the kitchen sink. So I'm only going to plumb the cold water at the moment. So what I need to do is cut this off. Okay, so once you cut it off, you just deburr the edges. You can run a bit of sandpaper in there, just get rid of that, that cut edge and then you should be right to clip it in. Okay, so once you've got it cut off and deburred, you mark one inches down from the end and that's when you push it in, that's where it sits. That's where the mark should be. And that, that mark's just used as a guide. Um, usually once you hear it click, it's actually in. So there it is in. Nice tight fit. So that one's connected, and same as this one. I need to get a saddle so I can secure it to the wall. Um, next step is getting it outside, outside down there. So I need to cut another bit off to length, and then poke it out the wall and push it on. So with these connectors, you can also get stop ends or caps. So I'm going to put one of these where the basin's going to go, just so I can stop the water off for now because I'm not ready to plumb the rest of it. I just want to get the shower working first. So to get the water in here, all I'm doing is connecting a poly pipe up to this sharp shark bite connection. It's only going to be temporary um, until I get a proper setup. It'll get me out of trouble for now. So this is, I think it's a three quarter adapter to shark bite. So what I'm going to do once it's outside is push this onto the, onto the pipe and then to connect it to the poly pipe I've got one of these which is a three quarter adapter for the poly pipe. So poly pipe goes in this end, off the other end, goes onto this and then onto the shark bike connection. So I've now got that pipe running out the wall. So what I'm going to do is put thread tape on these connections, make sure they're nice and tight and not, not going to leak any water, and then push it on from the outside. Okay, so with the thread tape, you just wrap it around a few times. That should do it. And then to break it off, you just hold one end, put force on the other, and then snap it off. And then you can run, run your fingers around it just to make sure it's all nice and flat. Then to join the other end, put it on, start threading it on until you get it hand tight. And then get a shifter on both ends just to tighten the rest. So from this we're going from shark bite to brass adapter to poly pipe connector. So just go down to your local plumbing shop and they'll be able to sort you out. Tell them what you want to connect from and what you want to connect to and they'll give you the right bits to do so. So all I need to do is now push this on from the outside, connect the poly pipe up, um, Make sure everything's sealed in this plumbing in here. Uh, make sure no water's going to come out of random spots. Make sure the taps are all turned off. Um, yeah, and then see how it goes. Give it a tester. So I actually made a mistake. I connected the, the pipe up to this one, which is actually meant to be the hot water. So the good thing about these shark bite fittings is you can actually remove them. Okay, so I've got some fittings here to connect them. You push it on till it's in all the way till you hear the click. So that's on. That's not going anywhere. Can't pull it off. Um, 
and say if that was a mistake like mine was, grab your pliers. What I'm using is the center bit there. So these things here, and that's going around the pipe like that. There's no pressure on it. I can slide it there like that and to get it off, hold it in, use your thumb like that and push, push it out. So push it out. And there we go, it's off. As easy as that. And you can actually see how this this works. You can see the, the little marks on it like that. They're actually the shark teeth which clamp it on and they're one way. So once you push them on, they lock in like claws and you can't pull them out until you slip that little collar and that actually forces those, those claws to spread out like that and then you can slip it out. So that's how you do that. Easy fix. Okay, so I've got to install these tap valves. So what I've done, put a bit of thread tape on, just like I showed you before. One will go on the left, one will go on the right. So hot, cold, and this is where your shower head comes out. Um, just gonna put them in for now, just so I can test the water flow. Make sure there's water. And then make sure water goes out the drain. So they're both on. Tighten it up with the spanner. Now I just need to get the, the shower rose connected and I've got a spare one laying around so I'll put thread tape on this and then um, connect the shower rose. So I've got three here that were left over from a job. I had to actually replace all these. They all were replaced for different reasons. Okay, so I think this middle one should be all good. I replaced a couple of parts, made it work. Um, well, not sure if it works just yet, but um, I'll connect it up in the shower and see how it goes. Okay, so there we go, it's installed. Uh, I've got this old tap fit in here. Uh, I'm just gonna make sure they're turned off. Just so when I pressurize the system, water's not coming out here without me having control of it. Okay, so I've currently got the system pressurized. Um, cold water only. Currently no leaks. Just feel around, make sure there's no leaks, no drips. Nothing. No water's coming out the hot inlet, which is good. Okay, so we'll test the shower. Turn it on. We have flowing water. Okay, that'll probably do me for today. Um, panels are all charged. I haven't even been using much battery, but tonight I'll probably run the lights, drain it down a little bit. Um, I'll work on getting the, the earth wires connected, maybe tonight, tomorrow, but I won't film that. Um, I'll just update you on it. So yeah, pretty stoked on the water. It's been pressurized for about five, 10 minutes. No leaks, but um, I think what I'm gonna do is have a, a valve on the inside here, so I can be pressurized all to the outside and a valve here so I can shut it off from inside instead of having to walk 20, 30 meters away to turn it off. So yeah, hope you enjoyed. Catch you tomorrow.